I'm going to use this Nova to show you what to look out for when you're out there looking for your first project car so that you don't unknowingly bring home a car like this. Stay tuned. All right, for my subscribers out there, here is the backstory on this 1977 Chevy Nova and how I ended up with it. So one day I was just out in the yard working and my dad sent me a text message and said he knew of a 1977 Chevy Nova that was coming up for sale from one of his relatives. This particular car belonged to the seller's mother and it had sentimental value to him. He was hoping that my dad would take it and fix it up and kind of keep it in the family, all that kind of stuff. So I told my dad if he wasn't interested in it that I would be interested in it. Uh, the seller was asking $1,200 for it and he was firm on the price. I, based on some of the pictures I saw, I was around $800, but I figured, you know, for the couple of extra hundred dollars, you know, it would still make good content for the channel either way. So I wasn't too worried about the condition of the car for that price, but I was expecting it to be in better shape than it is. And we'll get into that in, in a minute here. So anyway, my dad sent me pictures of the car. I looked at it, it looked okay. It looked like a complete car at a minimum, which is good. So you don't have to go finding all the different little pieces and everything. It looked like it was all there. So I bought the car sight unseen and my dad towed it over to my house and then I looked it over. The car is in really rough shape. So I decided to use it as a good example of kind of what not to buy if you're looking for your first project out there or at least to know where to look and what to look at so that you can negotiate a better price there. So long story short, I gambled on the, the car. I lost, I was hoping that it would be more solid so that I could have a running and driving project for the channel, but that's not gonna be the case here, at least right now. So the one thing I want you guys to take away from this video is that you never buy a car sight unseen. So I did that with this 1977 Chevy Nova and also my 1971 Camaro that's over there, uh, which was an eBay purchase. In both cases, the cars were worse than described or ex than I expected them to be. So um, definitely go out and look at it. And if you don't know what you're looking at, take somebody with you that does. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and walk around this 1977 Chevy Nova and I'm going to show you all of the areas that you need to look at when you're out there looking at your first project car. This 1977 Chevy Nova has everything wrong with it that these old cars could have wrong with them. So uh, this video is really just focused on the body and the condition of the body because that's where most of your time's going to go. Stuff like the drivetrain and the interior, exhaust, that kind of stuff is easy fixes compared to doing sheet metal work. And it takes a lot less time to deal with those things than it does dealing with sheet metal. So let's go ahead and do the walk around. Before we do that, drop down to the comments section and share your favorite tip for finding your first project car. All right, let's look at this Nova. All right guys, so we are going to start here at the front of the vehicle and then we are just going to work our way around and take a look at everything. So at the front of the vehicle, what I'm looking for here are basically the gaps on the hood and see how that'll fit. It's looking for evidence of uh, wrecks in the past, uh, damage. The other thing I'm looking for here is does it have all the pieces to the car, all that kind of stuff, because all these little pieces add up over time. And some of them, as we'll talk about later in the video, you may not even be able to get a lot of parts for. So anyway, if we look here, you can see the gaps are all, the gaps on this side are pretty good. We got our uh, front piece here and coming over, this gap's all right. We got the hood is lifted up back here. A lot of times the springs and stuff swear out or whatever. So um, not too worried about that. Coming along the front here, you can see that we got most of our pieces. We do have some rust up in here on the hood around the front edge here. It all seems pretty solid though. So I don't think there's much to worry about right there. Taking a quick look at the headlight area here, this is out so it's an advantage for us. We can see that the bucket's got a little rust on it here. It's not too bad, but when we look in here, we can see that the radiator support is rusted pretty bad on this corner. And then it also looks like the inner fender in there might have some rust as well. And we can get a good look at the fender itself and see that uh, it seems pretty good. Moving on to the front fender, what we're looking for here is rust in the lower sections of the fender. Uh, sometimes you'll find it here, but most often you'll find it here right up against the door because debris gets behind here and it traps moisture 
and then this area starts rusting out. This car seems to have pretty good fenders, surprisingly. Uh, we do have a little bit of rust down in this area here. We've got some rust right in here, but overall it looks pretty good. Then take your hand and, and kind of go up in the wheel arches here. Don't drag it because you don't want to cut your fingers off, but just kind of push around, see what you feel in there and make sure you don't find any rust holes or anything. So, and then do it on the inner fender as well. This all seems okay. And then uh, take a look at the inner fender. We can see that we do have some rust right here on the edge of the fender. It's likely something we can work with and save this fender. The inner fender looks okay, but I think we are gonna have a good bit of rust up in the front here. We can see that we got layers of rust in there. While we're under here, we can also see that the body mounts are shut. We can see right here that we got some serious rust going on with the inner fender. It seems okay. I can't really press through it, but uh, that's not a good sign for the lower fender here. This is an easy fix. If we do have some rust down in here, we can get uh, lower fender patches for this. We don't have to buy the whole fender. So then coming up here before we go to the door, what we're looking for up here is evidence of debris in the cow vent. So you can clearly see that we got debris piles of it down in the cow vent here. That's not a good sign because moisture is going to get trapped in there and then it's going to cause the inner cow to rust. And then when that happens, water that does go down here is going to go to the inside of your car and then likely rot out your floor pans. All right, so now we're coming from the cow vent and we're going to go to this corner here. We're going to look for signs of rust down here in the A-pillar because it's likely that if you got rust up here, there's more hidden down there and it's also a good sign as to how your window channels and everything are going to be. You can see that we got a rust hole right here in the upper cow panel slash dash and there's a good chance that that extends pretty far down into the car. So expect to do a lot of work in this area. A lot of this is going to be custom fab work, patching little pieces, all that kind of stuff. Going up around the windshield here, this is all pretty good. I don't see too much rust up here. So we might get lucky with this and have a good channel across there, but I wouldn't bet on it. All right, so moving on to the driver's side door. First, take a look at the gaps and everything. So this one looks okay. It's, it's fairly even the whole way through. When we come over here, this door doesn't even close right. If we look down here, it's kind of twisted out at the bottom there. It's likely that you can see up here that we need uh, hinges rebuilt. Looks like it might be okay gap wise. Now these gaps weren't perfect. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for things that look odd. Something that would give you the idea that maybe it was wrecked or panels were replaced. Moving down to the bottom of the door, we can see that we got a lot of rust on the bottom door edge. Now this door does not open so I can't look at the inside of it right now but as bad as that is it's likely the door shell would need patched up easiest thing to do would be to just find some good door shells somewhere and then of course you probably noticed the rocker panel here this outer rocker is gone I mean there's there's no saving that so as bad as that is, I would expect to have to do some repair work on the inner rocker as well. If the outer rocker looks good on the, on the face here, you also want to make sure you check underneath of it and feel around and you can see stuff's falling out there. And then if we look up under here, we got some serious rust up here where all of the metal comes together. And it looks like somebody has uh, brushed on some kind of undercoating or something under here, maybe to pass inspection way back in the day, who knows. Coming along here, all this window channel stuff looks to be okay. We got some paint that wore off right here. That all looks okay though. It looks like it would come out. We have some bubbling or something here. So there looks like there might be some damage under there. Looking at the top of the roof, dirty, but it looks pretty good. There's no major dents in it and all that. You know, consider that if you got a lot of dents up in here, you might have to replace the skin. So here we have the trim going along there. There's no real rust that I see. There's a spots like right here. And then coming down further, we got some here and this one is bubbled up pretty good. So there's a good chance there's gonna be some repair work in this area. All right, moving on to the quarter panel. It looks good at first glance, but closer up, you'll see it has some issues here. So 
Uh, the first thing you want to look at, of course, is this area here off the door. And we can see that we got some rust going on up in here. And right around the corner here, we got rust up in here. And I'm sure you'll immediately see that we got all kinds of rust in the outer wheelhouse here. Going around the arch, it looks pretty good. Then going around the back here, we have a lot of, uh, looks to be surface rust. It doesn't look like it's going through. So then what you wanna do is you wanna take your hand and kinda of go up into the outer wheelhouse. You can't see this right now, but my hand's going up behind the quarter through the wheelhouse. There's nothing there. What that tells me is that this quarter panel has been replaced because the rust on the edge of the wheelhouse should match the rust on the quarter panel in most cases. Meaning if the outer wheelhouse is gone, so should the, the quarter panel because they're spot welded together. You can see the layers of undercoating up under here. Definitely a good chance people are hiding stuff. In the back there, we got the shock mount right there and it's broke. And then right next to it, you can see a good bit of rust on the frame rail there. Going to the rear of the wheelhouse here, we can see that uh, somebody has riveted a piece of tin on there and was repairing some holes and stuff in that wheelhouse. And then a quick look back there to the gas tank area, frame rail, all that. You can see a little bit of rust in there. All right, moving to the back of the quarter panel here, looking for signs of rust. We just got a little bit of rust up in here. Moving on to the rear of the car. I had to drill the lock out because the key wouldn't open it. But we can see that we got all kinds of rust on the rear of the deck lid here. Lots of bubbling. So we've got some bad areas right here where we got some stuff lifting up pretty good. So this is all stuff you have to consider because you can't get this piece. Looks pretty good. We got our emblem, we got some lights. We got some rust here that's pretty bad. It's like coming out right here. This isn't too bad. This could probably be saved, but that there's gonna need patched. We got the majority of the rust down here where that panel meets this one here. And that's definitely gonna need repaired because that flange just comes down there is pretty much gone. All right guys, so now we'll take a look in the trunk. Now this is where it gets kind of tough when you're out there looking because sometimes you can't see the trunk floor. Sometimes they have mats or spatter paint or like uh, bed line or stuff over. You never know what you're gonna find. So you don't really know the condition of it. So you gotta look at both sides. You gotta look at the underside, top side, look for things that don't look right. In this car here, you can definitely see that the uh, squirrels had fun in here. We got what it looks like acorns kind of all over the place. It stinks in here, right here. Look like something died right there. Taking a look here. What I always go for here is like looking here so we can see that somebody put new quarter panels on this car. Did it the old fashioned way and just riveted them right to the old ones and then bondoed over top of it. Same thing on this side. So again, you wanna to try to get access to these areas so you can see this stuff. And then of course we have a large hole over there where the shock would normally be. So we'll have to look at that. And it looks like in the same area back here, we got some rust too. So definitely some repair work there. I don't know what's going on there. It looks like somebody slapped a bunch of tar or something on there. So I don't, I don't know if that's factory or not. Maybe it is factory seam sealer or something, but it definitely looks like there's something going on in that corner. Here's the other corner and you definitely don't have all that stuff there. So I think somebody tried to deal with a problem there. Yeah, we got all kinds of rust in there. And I don't know what that's about. This side doesn't look like that side. So there's some uh, interesting stuff going on there. You know what, maybe it was the old quarter panel. I bet that was it. Yeah, it looks like that's the old quarter panel. So, and then other than that, we got lots of holes everywhere. We got holes here. Let's get this tire out of the way. So we got moisture and stuff under there. Definitely needs a full trunk pan. You can see that got just rust bubbling up. Although here's kind of cool. You can see some of the original spatter paint that they had in there. Look over in here, you can see that the wheelhouses are pretty much gone on that side. The inner wheelhouses, might be okay, but they got a lot of rust on them. All right, 
out of the trunk back up to the deck lid up under the deck lid here this is the edge where it closes here we're just looking to see how bad that is so we got some bad spots right here and it comes over and it's pretty bad i think this could be saved so just a little bit of work into it i'm going to check these areas around the rear windshield because a lot of times the water will come in here and sit and rust like that right there so this trim's loose and you can see the holes that we have right there. And we got, we got lots of rust in there, so definitely some work to do in there. And what do we got going on here? Looks like more black tar. Oh yeah, we got plenty of rust up in there. All right guys, done looking in there. We found enough bad stuff, so. Let's uh, close that up and go to this quarter. All right, so now we're just gonna look at the same things over here. So we're looking at the quarter panel. It looks okay, it looks decent. Again, we saw that it was replaced, so um, no surprises there. Coming into the underside here, we have the same thing we had on the other side. Somebody tried to patch the outer wheelhouse here. All right, so going up right here, you can see that somebody put a plate right there and moved that shock bracket to that plate and they welded that plate right to the frame rail and they just cut everything out of the way there and pushed it off to the side. So that shock support did go up through the car at one point and somebody fixed it. I guess you'd call that fixing it. And here you can see that again, we got all that black tar, whatever that stuff is. It's some kind of undercoating, I think. I don't know, you guys let me know what you think it is. It's got to be something from the 80s but it's just rust all through it there so coming down here got the same rust and then again kind of running hands up that's the wheelhouse is not there i mean it's gone so moving over to the doors here we're looking at the gap here and you can see that we got a really wide gap at the top and then as we go down it's pretty narrow so like i said these cars didn't have great gaps from the factory but that's something that's odd right there so we'll take a look in there likely has to do with the replacement of the quarter panel and then down here we can see that this door is pretty much gone i mean it doesn't even let me get a side view here you can see that that door is so bowed out and everything that uh you know that frame and that door shell isn't going to be any good the rocker panel on this side looks a lot better than the driver's side but I would still assume that it's in the same condition and you might have to replace it. All right, so coming down the door here, you can see the weather strip needs replaced. So account for that. Up here we got, I've never seen these areas go bad, but that's really thin. That feels thin. And man, look at that. We got holes in the door, frame itself. And that explains why this is thin because it's pretty much gone. So this door's shot and I would assume that the driver's side door is shot. And then if we look under here, we can see that that door shell is gone. So this door needs replaced. Just taking a quick look at the rocker panel here. It feels okay. I mean, for considering the rest of the car. But you can see here, we got some holes right here. That feels okay. So then here, this is, a, I mean, these are just rivets, obviously, holding the quarter skin over the old uh, quarter here. The old quarter panel, the full quarter, it's all one piece. This just skinned over top of it. And that bowed this all out, which made that gap smaller in here. So I was wondering what was going on there, but that makes sense. With the door wide open, take a look inside where the hinges are at. You can see what I mean when I said the stuff gets behind the fender. So take a look there. We got some acorn stashed away back there. So anybody, a squirrel gets hungry, knows where it's at. But you can see the fender back there and it looks okay. The door doesn't, the door looks terrible, but the fender looks good. And coming around, this fender is in 
decent shape too. Same, same as the other side, a little more rust down here low. We got some rust inside the inner fender well. Checking the fender lip here. It's pretty good, it's nice and solid. And then of course, we got this too, which is nice and solid. Body mounts shot on this side as well. Subframes rough. So taking a look at the corner over here, you can see that we got some rust right up in here. So you want to go along the whole trim here and kind of look at that. Um, it looks good up that way, but up here, we got some rust in there. So you know that upper cowl panel is going to need some, uh, some work. All right, let's take a look under the hood. Quick look, everything looks like it's there. Again, everything's rusted. The first thing I notice is that the battery tray is in rough shape, like a lot of them are, but it's pretty much gone. And then the radiator support went with it. So you can really see that this radiator support's gonna need replaced. From what I'm seeing here, this inner fender may be gone up this way. You wanna check out this side of the car as well. I'm not sure what we have down in there but uh, a little bit of rust in there. We might be able to save the driver's side inner fender. And you can see the subframe has just a good bit of, I mean, it has a lot of rust on it. I mean, hopefully it's thick enough to where it would survive, but you definitely want to check that over. And then the heater box looks pretty rusty as well. It's hard to tell from out here, but it looks like the heater box may need replaced. One thing to notice is that all the lines are pretty much rotted. So you buy an old car like this, you're going to uh, want to replace all of the brake lines, all of the fuel lines. Looking at the hood, we got some rust right up in here, but it doesn't look too bad. All right guys, so let's take a quick look at the interior. The first thing you notice is that the headliner is no good, so that needs replaced. Uh, obviously the seats are in poor condition. The back seat looks okay, but uh, based on the amount of acorns and whatnot in here. I'd say that uh, there's a good chance that it needs new foam and everything. Cluster's all there. Looks like we got all of our buttons and everything. Knobs, all that. We'll go over to that side in a minute, but it looks like there's a nest inside the glove box. We got more uh, acorns on the floor there. Over in here on the passenger side, check that nest out in there. We got piles of acorns up in there. Uh, we got an air cleaner lid, 327 turbo fire. And we got a pile of acorns and some old cans, um, some wiring hanging down. We have our headlight in the back there, that's good. So we have all those pieces. All of the glass is in good shape. We got the mirror, that's good. So what you wanna do inside the car is really try to get a look at that inner cow panel. So normally you can see that by going up under the dash and taking a look. So I'm not excited to crawl in here. So I'm gonna just see if I can get the camera up under there because I am not crawling in this car yet until we get these uh, until we get it cleaned out so up in here we got the heater box on the inside of the car and it's definitely gone you can see right here we got pieces hanging down from it so we need the stuff inside the car it's likely that animals made nests inside of there as well all right guys so now we're going to crawl under the rear of the car and take a look what we're looking for here are frame rail issues, rust. A lot of times the rear tail panels rust out and you can see there's no exception here. So this is what the underside of the trunk pan looks like. So even though it may look okay in spots up top, this trunk pan needs replaced. You can see that we need the uh, suspension components here. And over here we can see that the trunk drop offs are rusted down at the bottom. And again, we have more rust up in the trunk area. This piece here, it looks pretty straight, so it doesn't look like there were any accidents back here. And then right here we have the driver's side drop off and it's pretty much gone. Fuel tank, I wouldn't trust it, but it looks okay. Here's a look at the driver's side spring pocket. You can see that we got lots of rust. So this is where things get pretty bad. You can see that this section of frame row, there's nothing left to it. It's Swiss cheese, it's gone. And it goes up pretty far. So as bad as this is, 
even if it was a little bit stronger up top, I think this whole frame rail needs replaced. As we go up the frame rail, you can see that we got lots of rust. It just keeps going. I don't see any holes up there, but that's just not good. So that would all need replaced. Here's a look at the spring pocket underneath the passenger side. You can tell it's pretty much rusted away. And if we take a look at the frame rail, you can see that it is slightly better than the driver's side, but it's still pretty bad. Let's to go under the car real quick. Here you can kind of get a good look going up of all the rust that's under here. This frame rail might be savable. You can see up over the wheel arch here that we got more rust up there. It's possible that might be okay, but uh, my guess is that it's not. So this car needs new frame rails. All right, so that is the rundown on the car and it is in rough shape. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is list out all of the parts that I think you would need to buy to repair this car. I'm going to list the price of those parts and whether or not they are available for this 1977 Chevy Nova. So all of the parts that you would need to deal with the rust on this car come to a little bit over $5,000. Also notice in that list that a lot of the sheet metal is not available for this 1977 Chevy Nova. The companies are not reproducing the sheet metal yet for this uh, fourth gen Nova, and they may never do that. It's just not a popular year of Nova, so they may not have enough demand to make sheet metal for these cars. So you're gonna have to find used parts, or you're gonna have to fabricate your own to even complete this restoration, which makes it even more difficult for the weekend warriors out there. So it's just something you gotta keep in mind when you're out there looking for uh, your car. And these people know that. So a reproduction radiator support for the older Novas is around uh, $200 or less. And some of the used radiator supports that I'm, I'm finding for this 1977 Chevy Nova are between $300 and $500. So expect to pay more when you have cars that do not have companies making reproduction parts for them. So guys, for over $5,000 in parts and $1,200 for the car, and then probably another couple thousand dollars for paint and body supplies, you know, this car is not worth saving for most people. You can go out and find a solid fourth gen Nova for $6,000 to $8,000. So, you have to consider that kind of stuff whenever you're out there looking for these projects. You know, you might say, well, I'll, you know, I can spend the $1,200 on this now and then work on it over time. But the reality is it's just not worth it. So now the 1971 Camaro that I have over here, if you put that same amount of money into it, that Camaro is worth more money in the end. You might be able to sell the Camaro between $15,000 and $30,000, depending on what you do with it. So things you got to consider. Now, if the car's got sentimental value to you and all that kind of stuff, then you know, it's, you just can't put a price on that. So anyway, so with all that said, this car is perfect for the channel because that's what Resto Car is about. It's about restoring cars at home. And this car has every problem you can imagine. So we can use this car to do different things. So we can do full floor pans, trunk pans, frame rails, all that kind of stuff. Um, and make content from it. And in that case, it makes sense for me to have something like this around. So we are going to save it, but it's gonna to have to wait until after we get the 1971 Camaro back on its wheels and running. So we're gonna do two more videos on this car before we push it to the back of the shop. Uh, one video is just gonna be cleaning it inside and out. So we're gonna get all the acorns out of there, all the squirrel hair, whatever's in there, it's all gone. So we're gonna get it out, we're gonna degrease the engine, we're gonna clean the car up as best as we can. Uh, mostly because I can't stand the smell of it. It's right next to my 71 Camaro and all I can smell is this car. So we're gonna clean it up. And then the next video after that, we will see if we can get that engine running because I do wanna know if it will run and I also wanna know what it is, so we'll ID it as well. So guys, if you got value out of this video, give it a like, it helps the channel. And if you wanna see those other videos I talked about, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get alert whenever we post the next video. As always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down below and I'll get back to you. We'll see you in the next one.